Hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back. What's up, guys? Welcome to this episode of Aussie English. Today is going to be up. Today is going to be a really good episode. The glasses just went under my seat, and I'll have to find them later. We have stocked up on stuff. So we got some drinks here. What else we got, Cal? We got some. We got nuts and fruit. And nuts and fruit. Healthy snacks for the road. So we are about to hit the road. And where are we going, Cal? Uh, we're going to a pumpkin festival. Pumpkins! <laughs> Alright, let's go. Alright, so food and drink in hands, we hit the road. It was about uh, 40 minutes or so along the highway up north until we got to Collector and then we were faced with this. So initially I was like, okay, what, what's going on? Is the police checking people or something before they get there? But no, it was just that the road was blocked like crazy. People were parking on the sides of the roads here and then walking in. And initially I was thinking, okay, maybe we can do that. You know, maybe we'll just park wherever we can find a park and walk in. But I thought, mm, I'll stay in the car. We'll keep driving and see what happens. My God, we were in the car for about 40 minutes driving along a road that was probably a kilometer long. I shit you guys not, it took forever. It was crazy. All right guys, so we are here in Collector and Jesus Christ. What is this? This is crazy. So crazy guys. Jesus, we're finally here guys. What an ordeal. I think we spent more time on the the road yeah, driving about 500 meters than we did getting all the way from Canberra to here. So here we are, let's go see what it's about. So it was pretty cute. There were loads of people already leaving though. It was about lunchtime and there was a heap of people leaving. I thought, oh, it'll be slow. There won't be that many people, but there was still a shit ton of people. So here you can see the, the gates. We had to pay about 10 bucks a person, I think. 10 bucks a head to get in. Um, we could obviously pay with cash on the left side and FPOS on the right side. So that is using your, um, I guess just using your bank card, right? So you use the FPOS machine, which is that little machine they use to do the transaction. And this chick was having a bit of trouble with, with the machine as we went through. And something interesting you might not know about, in Australia we have pay pass, we call it, where you can just touch the card onto the machine and it senses the microchip in the card and the transaction goes through. So if it's a, an order or some kind of payment under $100, you can do that and you don't have to enter any pin or anything like that. So we got in, man, it was hot and I forgot my goddamn hat. This is what happens when you forget your hat, guys. You're gonna stand in line for ages. Gotta pee, gotta pee, gotta pee, gotta pee, gotta pee. Okay, okay, okay. We're in the toilet now. If you guys have ever wondered what the inside of a um, portaloo looks like, a porta toilet, here you go. This is it. Look at it. Check this out. <laughs> Don't drop the phone. If you guys haven't already seen the movie Kenny, you definitely need to check out that movie. It's great, and it's all about portaloos. So outhouses. Um, what else? The brick shit houses. <laughs> Although these ones are plastic. Portaloos, we call them Portaloos. But um, yeah, check out the film Kenny if you haven't. There should be a picture here showing you. <laughs> so obviously being a pumpkin fate or fair, there were pumpkins everywhere the eye could see for sale. There were stores selling pumpkins. There were pumpkins on the ground, holding things down, waiting down signs. They were all over the place. You could eat them. We went into a, I guess it's the town hall, some kind of building where you could see all of these pumpkin dishes that were being, I guess, assessed and voted on. You could see these crazy pumpkin cakes and carved pumpkins as well. There was one there that was huge that was number one that looked like a jack-o'-lantern from Halloween. And then there were the smallest pumpkins awards, I guess, for those as well. So they were pretty cute.
So we made our way out, uh, walked around a little bit, and I stumbled upon the largest pumpkin. And this thing was huge. I think I could have crawled up inside of this had it been hollow. It was massive, guys. I don't think I could have lifted it. It was absolutely huge. And I would love to know how long that took to, <laughs> to grow far out and what steroids were they giving it. So we kept going, kept having a look, and then we stumbled upon what looked like sheep in a paddock. I was like, hmm, something interesting is going on here. And this guy was talking about herding sheep using cattle dogs, using these kelpies, these two black and white kelpies in the background. So we're walking around, checking out these different stalls, all kinds of leather products, there were clothes, and then uh, we found a whole heap of picture frames, um, hippie clothing, candles, different aroma things, all sorts of soaps, heaps and heaps of stuff. This is the kind of stuff you'll see at these markets, these farmers markets. And then we came across the food stalls. And this is where things started to get pretty good, guys. So I was getting pretty hungry by this point and decided that it was time to get something to eat. And we were also pretty thirsty. And so what's really common at these fates and at pretty much any public event, you're gonna see things that are like hot food stands. So you're gonna see hot dogs, which is like a sausage in a bun, you know, it's a pretty American thing, but it's popular here too. Um, you'll see all kinds of meat. This one also had hot chips. That's a really common thing to find at these stalls where you get chips with sauce and salt on them in little buckets, kind of like coffee mugs or coffee cups. They're cardboard coffee cups, but bigger. You get those, and then there were battered salves. <laughs> All right, guys, so I thought I had to do some food for you in this vlog. This is a battered salve. So this is a sausage in batter that's been deep fried, and then it's been dipped in sauce, tomato sauce, of course. Um, wow. It's pretty good, as you would imagine any dry, uh, deep fried food is. So I'm gonna hand this over to Kel and give her a bit of a go. Yeah, cheers, cheers, Kel. Kel? Cow? No. What did you? No. What did they... <laughs> There's nothing left. No, 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 no. What did you do? You <laughs> smashed it. No. Ah. This is so unfair, guys. We might have to get another one. <laughs> so I thought there was this scarecrow in the middle here. And then I looked sideways and I was like, this, this crowd's pretty thick. And all of a sudden I realized they're all pumpkins on sticks and there's people standing up at all scarecrows as well. These are, they're not people, they're all scarecrows. I had no idea, I thought it was just a really thick crowd. how multicultural Australia gets guys. We're out in the middle of, you know, whoop whoop in um, a town called Collector and we have here German hot dogs, Turkish gozlemi, we've got Tiandi farm chicken food, what else have we got? Some authentic organically grown, don't know what, and then the French crepes as well. So there's stuff from all over the world in this tiny little fate fair thing. Crazy. Where's the Brazilian food, Cal? I'm still looking for it. <laughs> I was thinking this was, um, some African country or something guys, like Uganda, and then I got it. You wanna, do you want a coffee? You want a coffee, okay, I get it, I get it. <laughs> we also stumbled upon some guy doing a kid's show. He was playing this pipe like a didgeridoo and singing about native Australian animals, which was pretty cute. <laughs> you ready? Skip, like a kangaroo, skipping around. Little Joey in the pouch, two ears sticking out. 
And then after that, we stumbled upon some old carriages that were drawn by horses. And it looks like we got some really old school carriages out the back here, guys. So people getting rides on those. Let's have a look and see if we can see one go past. And I don't know whether or not this was paid, but you could jump on these things and they would take you for a ride around this paddock or this oval. It could have been a cricket field, um, but it looked really cool. So I sat there and watched them come around. A common scene at all fairs, guys. The dunny queue. <laughs> What do you think, guys? This is pretty funny. <laughs> is that a bandicoot? Bandicoot? We kept walking around after that, looking at different stalls, and Kel found a really cute stall where you could buy baby's clothing called Bandy Cute. Pretty funny pun. So we grabbed something there for my niece. That was pretty cool, except for the fact that uh, Kel's card didn't work, so I ended up having to pay for that one. Thanks, Kel. But yeah, there were all kinds of book stalls. There were stalls selling Australian stuffed animals. Uh, there were stalls selling signs out of, made out of Australian animals. Then there were bracelets and jewelry, plants. You could get succulents and cacti, and even I think some, um, some carnivorous plants, right? So things like the pitcher plants and the Venus fly traps, which I found pretty interesting. Wasn't expecting to see that. And then of course, the ice cream truck or the ice cream van. Now this is a very common sight in Australia. Another really famous thing to see guys here when you come to these fairs is the ice cream truck. Usually with a big, big line in front of it. So there you go. Although I'm not gonna have any ice cream, not today. Just me that says it, guys, when things go wrong. It wouldn't be a fake, guys, without a sausage sizzle and the sauce hiding in there. So, bread, sausage, and there you go. We also ended up hearing some bagpipes being played in the background, which was pretty random. And there was a group of maybe 15 or so people standing in a circle in one of these pavilions. Um, it's just playing these bagpipes incredibly loudly. So I went and had a look at that. And then we were pretty much done for the day. We'd been there for a few hours. We were pretty wrecked, had eaten a little bit, walked around a heap. All right guys, I think we're all fared out. Smashed it out. Managed to only eat a little bit of dirty food and um, didn't break the bank. Although Kel did trick me, she got me. Oh my God. <laughs> so we ended up buying something for my uh, niece. So I think we're gonna head home now. Pretty wrecked, pretty wrecked, lots of sun exposure. Oof. Got my vitamin D for the day, I'll tell you what. And another thing I guess that was kind of interesting was that there were two of these graveyards on either side of the main street as we walked out of this fair. And this, this you'll see a lot in Australian towns, especially small towns that are quite old. You'll see that the churches quite often have graveyards next to them. And of course, as soon as we got out, we needed coffee. So we went to some cafe, the cafe at the intersection there. As always guys, we're gonna do a quick pit stop and get some coffee. And sat around, got some coffee and also tried some delicious treats here. So I think that we grabbed some carrot cake here. That was delicious. And uh, yeah, I just can't, can't get enough of the carrot cake. And then it was time to head home. So we got in the car, we got out pretty quickly, fortunately, it wasn't too blocked, but then we hit traffic and we were like, okay, what the hell is going on? Why is the highway where we should usually be driving at about 110 k's an hour, why are we moving at like five k's an hour? So we sat there for ages and then uh, the GPS told us that it had been an accident 
up ahead, interestingly enough. And so we were waiting for ages, like four or five kilometers of just heaps of people heading back to Canberra. Man, I can't believe this shit. We get back on the highway, we're meant to be doing 110. And how fast are we going, Kel? That's 10 kilometers. 100 kilometers too slow. So there's been some accident apparently up here, but it feels like we got to collect it earlier on and we were going the same speed for about 20 minutes, <laughs> trying to get to the town to park. And now we're just trying to get home. We're doing the same shit again. God damn it. <laughs> Hopefully everyone's okay in the accident, but far out. And I was expecting to see some epic carnage when we got there, but it had all been taken away. And so we just passed a few cop cars and uh, the fireys, and that was about it. And then we headed home. Good thing on the way home though, I thought mm, another excuse to do some photography. We passed these horses in a field near uh, a horse club of some kind or some place where some person obviously takes care of people's horses on their land. So these fields were full of about 20 horses and we got out of the car and they all came over to us. It was, it was beautiful and Kel got to do some photography whilst the sun was setting with these horses in the background. All right, guys, that is it from me today. I hope you enjoy this vlog. Let me know, do you guys like pumpkins? Comment below and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon if you would like to keep up to date with all the latest videos. I hope you have an amazing week, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.